guys, Kenzie Knox and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be painting Joni Young's How to Paint Koi Fish. So I'm super excited and I just can't wait to paint this painting. So let's just jump in and get started. Hi everyone, it's Kenzie Knox and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be painting Joni Young's How to Paint Koi Fish. And you can find her on YouTube, Patreon, um, basically any platform, even Facebook. She's fantastic and she's super, super knowledgeable. So um, she does everything from beginners to intermediate to even advanced painters that just want to sit back, relax, and have fun. And that's what our goal is today. So let's just get into this painting. I'm super excited. I've been wanting to paint this for a while now, and I am just ready to paint it. So to begin off with, we're going to take our palette. We're going to get some phthalo green on there, which is like a warm green, and then a deep green, which I have this deep green color. Um, I hope this is deep enough. She uses hunter green, which is I know is a very dark color, so if this is not deep enough, I might have to add some black to it, but go ahead and put those down on your palette. And a solid amount because we'll be painting the background. She did prime her canvas um, with gesso. I have not primed my canvas, and I'm thinking maybe I should, um, only because it will accept the paint better, so maybe we should prime our canvas first, so let's see. Okay, so once your canvas is nice and primed, we're going to go ahead with that um, phthalo green and deep green color, and we're going to mix those together and apply them to our canvas. And I'm going to use that same angular brush, that size 12 angular brush. Okay, so if your canvas is thoroughly dry, which I'm not guaranteed that mine is completely dry just because I just painted it and I didn't use a hair dryer, it's dry to the touch, but I'm still nervous to apply water to it. Um, I'm going to make sure my brush is thoroughly wet before I apply the greens. However, if you're comfortable with your canvas or you gessoed it, go ahead and you can use a water bottle like I did um, before. You can spritz your canvas down. Just make sure there's no drips on it. So you could spray your canvas and then wipe off the drips using your paintbrush. Or you can take your damp brush and just go ahead and wet your canvas a little bit. And then you can take your greens. So you're just going to load your brush up with both greens. I'm going to wet my brush, tap off the drips. A little bit and then load it up with both greens okay and then we're just kind of gonna come in and just kind of go all over the place here I'm gonna wet my brush again and I'm just mixing up those greens and creating um, a textured background so it doesn't need to be smoothed out okay so now she's drying it off with a hair so dryer and she's smoothing out some of the harsher lines and brush strokes um, that you could see on your canvas. Mine's not ready yet, so she's a little bit ahead of me, so I'm just going to pause her for a moment. Um, her green is definitely a little bit more yellow than mine, um, a little bit more marshy in green, but that's that's completely fine. You can use any color greens that you want. Um, we're just trying to create some contrast with the colors that we're going in with. So I noticed mine's getting a little lighter with the white underneath, so I must be picking up white pigment underneath, but that's okay because you want this to be all different color greens. And once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and blow dry it, like I said, and then you can smooth it out while you blow dry it, or you can let it sit like I have to and just kind of play around with it a little bit. Which I think I'm happy with that, although I am going to take some more deep green up here. I think the streaks will create like more of a um, movement in the water, but once you're happy, you can go ahead and wash out your brush and then let it dry. For this next step, while your canvas is drying, we'll need to um, put down on our palette some ultramarine, light ultramarine blue. So I only have ultramarine blue, so I'm going to actually create this by adding white to this ultramarine blue to create a very light periwinkle-ish color. And then we'll also need some titanium white or white. And so in order to do that, I'm actually going to use my palette knife, which is really helpful when you're trying to mix some paints. 
And just to show you my colors, so I've got my ultramarine blue here, and I just mixed it with some white to get that periwinkle color, and then I've got a big, large sum of white over here, and that's what we'll be painting with. And so my canvas isn't completely dry, but I'm thinking it might be okay, so we're just going to work on wet on wet and see what happens. And if it really doesn't work, then um, I will have to wait for it to dry. So let's just give it a go. Let's see. Okay, so to begin off with, I'm going to, I don't know if she wetted, I'm going to damp my brush. I'm going to use a size 2 filbert brush. She's um, using a filbert brush as well. Um, her canvas is a lot larger than mine, so she's using a size 8 filbert or 9 filbert brush. Um, but since I'm using a smaller canvas, I'm going to go with a smaller can, um, paintbrush size. And so I'm just going to take some white on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to create this letter C that starts about a third of the way down. And about almost a quarter of the way in and it's just gonna come over and then it's gonna start coming over farther and then end around here and I'm just gonna go over that line again And it's going to be thicker over here than it is at the bottom. And so I'm just going to come over just a little bit more. Up, and then she's doing these pull and wisp things. So like that. And then another one over here. And then she's doing these little lines here. And you can pick up some more white, make this a little thicker. And then right about here, we've got a little indication kind of behind the very sort of indistinct here. Okay, so now there's like this little fin that she draws in that's about a third of the way down. So like, if you come about a third of the way down, it just kind of comes out like this. It just comes a little bit down. And then we're going to make this, grab some more white, and then these fins coming down a little bit more. Some wispy lines and then thickening so up our C. I Okay, I'm going to rinse off my brush, tap off the drips, and then try to get some transparency through to that green. And she uses just a towel to take off some of the paint so um, from her brush. And I'm already taking off green. <laughs> So I might have to add green to my canvas instead. That's okay. That's just because I'm wet on wet. If yours is dry, then you can go ahead and your um, your fin should be pretty. Um, it should be tr pretty transparent. You should pull off the white paint, which is the whole goal. And 
Okay, grab some water on your brush. Tap off the drips. Grab a little bit of white. Water out that white for a transparent color. And we're just going to go on here. And then come up to... And they actually all look like they almost always do. Like a little more white in here. Okay, so now we're working on the top of the head. And so we're coming over here. Where the mouth is. And then we're coming down just a little bit. And then we're coming back in. And And then, just gonna be an eye about right here. And then we're just really just grouping this in. Almost to, oops, I think I might have went a little too far, but that's okay. It's almost where these fins are. Those little wisps are. My fish might be a little too big, but that's okay. I'm gonna add a little green. I'm gonna add dark green to my canvas only on palette. Sorry, only because um, my paint is not dry yet, and I don't have the ability with me right now to actually um, dry this. So either I can wait or just fix it. Try to fix it anyway. I think I'm just pulling off paint. I really want that to be more narrow. Alright, I'm gonna have to wait for that to dry. I'm pulling up all the paint. So going back in with the white. I'm just gonna go in. I want to make the mouth right here. And then we're just gonna pull in and make this all white. Oop, I got a drip. Make this all white except for the eye. Go around the eye. And if you're having trouble, like, I'm pulling off paint, you can either get a little more water on your brush, and if that doesn't work, then we're going to have to wait for it to dry, unfortunately. But I might be able to get away with it. I'm gonna try that green again. Hmm, none of this really wants to work with me today. We will make it work, but that's okay. Grabbing some more white. If you can paint wet on wet, I give kudos to you because I have the hardest time wet on wet. Nothing's worse than trying to wait for paint to dry, right? I'm just going to create a little mouth here. Sorry. Going over and not meaning to. Okay, and I'm just going to lift up some of this paint so it's a little more transparent. Sorry, sniffles. Every time I paint, sniffles. All right. Oh, when did we add the blue violet? Oh no. Okay, so grab some white. Doing some white patchiness under here. Okay, so then we're going to draw another fin, which pulls upwards, like right here, pulls up, just a little bit, and then comes down and over, and it comes up. Do some lines right there, and then another line that comes down about here and it goes over like that
Okay, so now, okay, so if I'm across from this fan, I'm just going to pull this over. So it looks like a little square. Rectangle with a slight curve. Okay, with some more white. We're just gonna line this up. So then you notice is that she pushes the white to the top of her brush. So try to push your white to the top of your brush and that might help you or just pick it up on the top of your brush. That might help. Just add some more white and it's just not sticking, okay. Okay, grabbing some more white. We are going to go over here and flick off. And create a little pin right here. Washing my brush out, getting the majority of the water out of it. I'm gonna come in here. Okay. Okay. Inside your brush, tap out the drips and pull out some of this white here. Okay, so on the second fish, I'm going to take some of that periwinkle and white. And it's going to come up right underneath. Oh, we got an eyeball over here. So our eyes right here, right? And then our eyes over here. Okay, so the main shape is like it comes over. And then an S. We're not going to see the rest of the tail. It goes off the canvas. The rest of the tail, she said, goes off the canvas, so we really won't see it. So we're going to add some more white right over here. And you can just push hard around your brush, and I'll give you a thicker shape. More white. And we're starting to make the body wider, so take um, some white, and that periwinkle, I think, the shade. And we're going to take that line, and draw it out to meet this line here. And also take this line, kind of bring it straight Just down. And just fill it in with some white. Some and some periwinkle and white on the other there. side. The Over here, just gonna make this darker. Okay, and then we're going to need to create some fins over here. The shape comes out like this. And it's smaller and smaller. Then another fin over here. It's about here. Right here. There. I'm just going to create a little fin here. Okay. 
So I'm also going to curve this down. This one we're also going to curve down just slightly. Fold that in. Okay, so hopefully my paint's a little more dry, so I'm going to add some white to up here. Add some more of that blue and white. Again, check on the thin that scoops. I like that. And I'm going to add some more white. This oh, top guy. Alright, some more white. Kind of the base of the tail. And this one over here. I have some more white right here. I have it nice and bright. And add some more white. And if your paints are drying out on you, go ahead and spritz them down with some water. Or if you have a, um, a medium that'll help extend the life to you, that always helps. And then I'm going to rinse out my brush. I'm just going to add a little green to the mouth and then to the eye. And then she's just taking a little more of that white. A little periwinkle. I'm just gonna go out like that. You really get that movement in the water when you do this. Comes back in. All the curves and the little wisps and flow right when you have that movement. Otherwise it's gonna look very stiff and like a statue. And you'll be left with painting that doesn't really have any feeling or life to it. Okay, get some white on the tip of your brush. Oh, she added a fin. Okay. And so this one's going to come down. Kind of comes out and comes down. And then all of these other ones. And these kind of come across like straight. Okay, get a little wet on your brush. Kind of blend this out a little bit for some transparent looks. I'm going to take some more white on top of this. Okay, so I'm also going to take some more white and come around the mouth. And just above the eye a little bit. Under here. I'm 
Yeah, this is one more white over here. Okay, rinse out your brush. Take the ultramarine blue, the, the light ultramarine blue. I'm just going to add some of that down in here. And some coming out of here too. And then on the other fence too, so grab some more ultramarine blue, light ultramarine. And then we're just gonna kind of go over some of these and over some of these. Okay, and a little ultramarine blue. Just to connect it to the fish. Okay, I'm going to rinse out my brush. And we're going to add some yellow ochre. Which yellow ochre. So grab some yellow ochre. And just start going over here. And then you can just patch it on in. So come over this way and create some just like blotchy dabs. All the way down. Some on this side, and on the very edge. Oops, I'm pulling off paint. Okay, and then here, we're going to go around here. And over the eye, or around the eye, sorry. Okay, add some water to your brush too if you're having trouble moving your paint. Especially if you have thick body paint. And then we're going to get patchy over here. And then we're going to line this side of the fish with the coin. And then we're going to go just to about right there. And then fill this in. We're going mostly over the entire fish. I am pulling off paint left and right. I don't know if any of you are. Um, some patchiness. Yeah, I am just pulling off paint. Add a little more water to my brush, tap out the drips. Set my yellow ochre a little bit. Try to bring that down. We'll see if that even, maybe it'll help us create what we're looking for. Who knows? Okay. 
I'm just gonna do some brush this over here too. And grab some more yellow ochre. It's gonna be down. Uh, she said it's gonna be darker over by this fin. Oh, rinse out your brush. I'm gonna mix some yellow ochre with some of that periwinkle, that uh, light ultramarine blue. I'm just doing some crisscrosses over here. And then some of those two colors ultramarine, yellow ochre. And then on the top by the fin, do those all scoops um, down a little bit under the fin or past the fin, just a little bit. And then again, take that same color. I'm just adding it to that line that we created with the yellow ochre. And then up over here. So it'll be dark over here. Taking that yellow ogre and that light ultramarine. It's gonna go up on the head right where I've shadowed a bit. Oh, and a little bit of white for the eyes. So the eyes are gonna be there. Right there. Okay, rinse off your brush. Oh, so we need to grab a little bit of black now. So grab your black. And I have jet black. So that's the color I'll be using. This is jet black. You just need the dab, like a little dot. And then she mixes that with the yellow ochre. Yellow ochre and black. I'm gonna fill in the eye. And then I'm gonna get my brush a little wet. I'm gonna add some of this just right there. Okay, so go ahead and dry that off if you can, and then we'll start our next step. Okay, so now we'll need some neon orange. So grab your neon orange. Okay, so taking your neon orange, um, you're gonna take a little pile of that too and make it. Um, a little lighter with some white. So go ahead and mix up that little pile. Okay, so load your brush with that light neon orange just on one side. We're going to do um, some tapping, I guess. We're going up. My neon orange is a lot lighter than hers. So I might have to go back over that. I'm going to grab some regular neon orange. Go on the outside of it. And it kind of ends at the end of this fin. Goes a little past it. Okay, and then we're coming around the mouth. That neon orange. And then around the eye. Grab some more. And I'm just gonna fill it in up here, splotchily, if that's a word. Uh, and then um, down into here. And go back over here. I'm just getting a blob of it on there. And then bring it down the center. So finger on top, and then she starts a little under this fin. And then meets up under here. Okay, 
I'm gonna take that neon orange down a little further. It's starting to come down to this fin. Okay, so grabbing some orange and white. So if you guys can hear Tilly, she hears something else. Grab some more orange. Tilly, please don't bark. Come down. And let this fin kind of come up to the center. And then I'm on this little line here. This one. I'm going to take some of that white orange and come in the center to create that white line, like a lighter line. Then come down here under your ochre with that light orange. By the fins. Oh, we got some white dabs now. Take some white. It's going to be up here. Put it inside my brush. I think just taking some of that light ultramarine with some white. And then creating some of these dabs here. Okay, that light ultramarine. Then grab some white. It's gonna highlight over here. That white. Let's jab it on in there. And on the top. Okay, so grab some white, and this is going to be the brightest part of the fish right here. This is going to be the brightest part of the fish, is what she was saying. And then add a little of that ultramarine blue, that light ultramarine blue. Just kind of re-adding in like where I need my bright lights and highlights to be. Maybe over here. And I'm gonna that light ultramarine should be coming somewhere over here. And get that texture and pattern. All the way over. And a little bit more white will definitely help. Just a little bit over here. And, and grab some more. I'm going to use my pinky as a stabilizer. Adding some more white. And then we'll come in with our neon red and then our crimson or scarlet. Either one will work. And then you can be happy. And I'm just grabbing some. The white blobs, I'm just gonna throw them on this side. And then you can go ahead and dry that off. Uh, one little thing I want to add is, um, she looks like she took that white and orange color, and she came down the center of the fish. Which looks like I'm just taking off paint, so <laughs> I'll make that again. So, orange and white. Just gonna add that. Down like that. Let's see if we can try that again. Okay. So now she's using a neon red, which I don't have, so I'm just gonna use a red crimson. Grabbing some of that bright red. I might mix some red with some orange. 
some neon orange. Let's see what color that gives me. So around the eye. And down the side. Right around the mouth. Then down. Just adding near the center of the line, and then this goes to about where it bends, and then she adds it on to this other side over here. And then this might be over here. Okay, and then she's taking it down the line. And then she's going over this way. And a little bit over this way. And then a little bit more red. Maybe I should carry that down just a little farther. And then, let's see, I'm just going to dab around the eye a little bit. And up more towards the fin, so at the bottom of this fin. And then that kind of fades out to orange. And then I'm just going to take some more orange. Add some orange in here too. I feel like my orange kind of faded. Which neons do fade, so if yours is faded, feel free to go over it again. I'll really help it pop. <laughs> I just don't have a red that's bright like hers. It's like this really pretty red. Okay, it's now down to the other fish. Grab neon red if you have it. Or crimson. And then it's going to be darker. Have it like that. Okay, I'm going to rinse on my brush. Grab some more red and connect this. I'm going to grab some white. Dab it over there. I'm just going to have some more white spots over here. Grab some more white. Okay, rinse her brush out. Now she's taking a scarlet red. She's just adding some darkness over here where the shadow parts are. And around the little mouth. Yeah. And a little bit over here. 
Oh, this is scarlet red. Which I don't have, so I'm just using the red. And then a little bit over here on this side of the meridian line. All the way down. Okay, into the other fish. I'm going to add darkness to the side of them. And down that meridian, just keep blobbing. A little bit on this side over here. A little bit over here. I'm going to rinse that off, and I notice there's a little bit of white here, not orange. You know, I think I went over the meridian lines. I'm going to take some white. I'm going to recreate that meridian line. And then on the top, too. Oh, she's taking yellow. Never mind. Alright, some yellow ochre, I believe. Is that what color she took? Right over the meridian. Just adding that in. Oh, I need luminous yellow. So for luminous yellow, I'm just going to use this bright yellow color. I'm sorry, I don't know if you can say bright yellow. And then bring that down. Oops, I did that wrong. Hold on. Luminous yellow. It's kind of bright on the side of the red line. I'm going to bring that orange back to that over there. And then I'm going to rub some luminous yellow over that yellow ochre. Just barely any. And then put that luminous yellow over the meridian on the other fish. Rub some more yellow. Why are we adding white right now? Sorry, we're adding white. Fixing up some white spots here. I kind of want to bring this up a little bit. Then add some more white up to the eye on the other fish. And then this side too. A little over on the mouth. Okay, so grab some white. It's gonna be this fin that comes over. I'm gonna overlap some blues here. So these are the lines that kind of come over the top on the other fish. So they come all the way down. So with the fin on the top, we're going to mix some light ultramarine with some white. And we're going to start right under this fin in the yellow area. We're just going to come down 
chords with that. And just do a few simple lines. And grab some more blue. I'm going to draw some lines on this way. Just have them fold over this way. Take that blue, you can stand out a little bit more. This one right here. Or you could add more white or blue, depending on how. And then I'm going to add some more white. Like the blue, I like to add a little bit more blue because I know it's so beautiful with the red and the orange in this. Then we have our koi fish. Okay, so black and yellow ochre. Okay, so now we're going to add in some shadows. So we're going to create some shadows. And I want black in mine. this one out a little bit with you guys so so much for joining me today this was such a joy to paint and i'm happy i could share it with you i want to thank my patrons for requesting this one i'm gonna love i can't do every single request that i get i can try to do them but not everyone is going to work out um but for the most part i think i've been able to do just about everything you guys have been requesting So you could just add a little bit more black. And then that could continue to go on. So you can just pop out a little bit more, I guess. Not necessary though, but you can. You create little ripples if you wanted by doing some little thin layouts. You can create some ripples, I guess you're saying, but just thinning it out. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Drag it out a little bit. Just gumble it out a little bit. Let me just outline this one real quick. Okay, and we're done. Yay! So I hope you enjoyed this YouTube tutorial. I hope that it helped you create some koi fish that you enjoy. Um, I know I'm pretty happy with my koi fish. I didn't think it would come out as well as it did, so I'm quite excited. Um, I've been waiting to do this one for a while, but um, I hope you enjoyed this YouTube tutorial. If you did, remember to click the like below and to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So until next time, I'll see you guys later. Okay, bye!